Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Matt Cavanaugh. I'm a co-leader of the Parsippany Green Team along with Judy Hernandez. Uh, we formed the Green Team by Municipal um, uh, Town Council resolution in 2019 to pursue Sustainable Jersey certification as well as um, do sustainable things for the town. So largely this has grown up as a, as a grassroots movement with a lot of volunteers from the citizen community. And we have always pitched it this way so that more and more people can get involved. And our mission as the Green Team is to collaborate with our residents, town government, and business community to identify and implement programs that improve our quality of life and the physical, environmental, and financial sustainability of our community. And we created this mission to be very holistic because sustainability is not just about the environment, but it's also about the people, the diversity, and a lot of aspects that you may not consider uh, for a sustainable community. So interestingly, the Sustainable Jersey program has a very diverse context. It's a program where there's over 400 towns that are enrolled in some way, shape, or form with the program. So Sustainable Jersey is a nonprofit program, and they have a, a context and a structure to their program with 150 different Sustainable Jersey actions and of those actions, you get a certain number of points for those. So when you complete an action, you submit that for certification in a formal program, and then they award points to you and award points to the town. And we've already achieved bronze, which was our, our uh, awarded in 2021 with 200 points. And then there's a progression of awards up to silver, and in some cases, there's a gold credential in energy and water and health now also, right? So uh, it was a big achievement. It's a credential for the town and the municipality and the municipal government. And it also sets Parsippany as a leader in sustainable Jersey and New Jersey. So uh, some of the requirements for bronze included creating a mandatory green team. I mentioned our bench and our roster is uh, over 50 people strong on our distribution list. And then we also collaborate with the town council and the department heads the business administrator and the mayor on completing some of these actions. You have to implement two priority actions and then complete six of the 18 categories. And I'll get into those categories in a minute. Um, in total, 150 points. So we, got, we went above and beyond. We got 200 just to be sure that we would get the bronze. And uh, it turned out in our favor. So silver is the next credential that we're trying to accomplish in 2023 this year. Uh, that includes getting an additional 150 points. And on our roadmap, we already have several initiatives that are work in progress. So we, we consider that this year we might be able to get about 180 points in total. Um, the certification process is a multi-step multi process where you can submit your application. They kick back certain um, uh, activities. Maybe they request more information or more details. But it's very rigorous, and you have to satisfy all the requirements of the action specifically to get the points for that. So we're on a mission. And then in 2024 and 2025, we're also on a mission to go for gold and energy and gold and water. Um, so we consider these you know, important natural resources uh, to decarbonize our air as well as protect our water systems in the area. So. Um, Going for gold is a heavy credential. There's only two towns that have gold so far in New Jersey, um, but we think that's very important to go after. So that's a 2024, 2025 goal. Uh, I mentioned diversity and I mentioned broad categories across sustainable Jersey. These are 18 large categories across people, planet, and prosperity. They break them down into three major groups and then 18 subcategories. And like I mentioned, over 150 individual activities that you can get certified for. So you can see, you know, this spans a broad spectrum. And when we're recruiting for the green team, we say there's something for everybody. I guarantee you there's either an innovative project or something on this list that somebody can get involved with that, that fits their passion, that might be their skill set, or it's just something they're taking an interest in. So we're constantly recruiting for people to get more involved in the Parsippany green team. But you have animals, you have arts and, create, arts and creative culture. This is actually one that we need people for to start a creative team. Um, brownfields, community partnership, diversity and equity, emergency management and resiliency. There's a whole lot of activities just related to 
adapting to the climate change that's happening and making the community resilient in emergencies and protecting ourselves in the event of large climate disasters. So uh, there's aspects around that. Energy is largely encompassing reducing emissions and total expenditures and total consumption. Food is related to food and what we consume. Green design and some of the uh, projects around land use and transportation is about infrastructure and future planning for more green infrastructure and low energy buildings. We have health and wellness, natural resources, local economies, um, waste and sustainability and climate planning. These are like large scale programs, multi-year plans that you develop with the municipality and the state to add resiliency and sustainability features to permits and also applications and master plans. And um, I want to mention something about waste. Parsippany, we got a lot of points for waste in this last submission. Parsippany is actually in one of the top towns in terms of how we manage that. And we have a pretty diverse program that got a lot of points. And uh, we're trying to become an EPA WasteWise partner as one initiative that we're up to to kind of join the context of a larger um, uh, nationwide program that has credentials as well. But our team started in the very close to the pandemic. We have always had virtual meetings. So for two and a half years, we were all on Zoom. We had never really met in person for most of us. And um, that worked out really well. It's low carbon emissions, right? No one's driving anywhere. So we like that. Um, but there's some formality to the program. We project manage through monday.com. We have a Facebook page. We have a website. Um, we have a master action tracker. Uh, we also have um, a monthly meeting that we're going to put back into practice um, once, once a month for an hour and a half in the evenings uh, to be scheduled. And then we also use Microsoft suite programs like OneDrive and OneNote and Doodle invites to figure out how to schedule certain things. So trying to keep it organized. Um, so progress so far, I wanted to get into some of the details of our bronze award. These are specific actions that we completed and it's required to complete actions across those 18 categories so that you're not all invested in one category only. And we completed across community partnership, emergency response, food, innovative community projects, and I'll, I'll comment on those two in a second natural resources and you can see six actions in waste management that got us uh, a decent amount of our points. Um, we have line of sight to another 180 easily and um, those actions what we have in the, in the workflow is uh, some community engagement innovation more points for waste and energy and natural resources. So we, we were actually trying to recruit for people that can take on actions in other categories to complement what we have in our pipeline already. Um, the innovative projects, so this is really cool what happened. Because it was really grassroots and citizen heavy, we've had a lot of offshoot programs like the Keep My Street Green program that Srini runs and the Bat Protection Project, which was a kind of a, a, a branch that grew from this. So we're not also just like engaged in the sustainable jersey program but we also want to grow things organically in the community and and encourage people to just run and go one direction wherever their heart is right because anything sustainable helps the community and um, uh, and it's very important so i wanted to get into a little bit more details about gold and energy this is something that's passion for me i come from the energy industry i've been there for 20 years and I currently work in renewable energy. So the gold in energy is about completing these eight key actions uh, across the community. And overall, it's intended to reduce carbon emissions and total energy consumption across the community, uh, including the municipality, businesses, and then also homes. So some of the key actions include energy efficiency for municipal buildings, uh, we actually had a program that started there, energy tracking and management of the municipal buildings, buy electric from renewable uh, sources. So I wanted to mention a comment about this. If you aren't aware, you can switch to a 100% clean energy provider on your bill uh, without switching the um, JCPNL. So uh, it's worth some research in that area, but the municipality can also buy 100% renewable energy uh, for all of their buildings through their billing system. 
Renewable government energy aggregation is where we basically partner with local green energy producers and we offer that to citizens so that they can um, get clean energy at a discounted price by utilizing the buying power of the entire community. Um, community and residential outreach is about educating the community for what exists in state programs and New Jersey clean energy programs and what's available through the Board of Public Utility. On-site solar and geothermal is related to um, infrastructure for renewable energy resources to produce clean energy and clean power and clean heating on site. And then fleet management and EVs, uh, I have a slide about the potential for Parsippany, which is really, really encouraging, specifically our location. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a map later on that. Um, so the gold requirements, you know, there's certain credentials where over a time period you have to reduce and track and validate the carbon emissions of the community to specific percentages and protocols. So um, this includes building, um, municipal fleet, renewable energy generation, and also uh, on the community-wide engagement, it also includes purchasing green power, uh, integrating renewable energy features like solar and heat pumps into your house, and then also the outreach to the commercial sector in the community. So it's pretty rigorous, um, but at the same time, it's very important because we want to clean our air and we want to reduce our emissions overall. Parsippany has, um, you know, ha has uh, a lot of emissions that come through there. We have a lot of highways that uh, put emissions in the air. So whatever we can do as a community to reduce our emissions is going to be important. And then we did a rough carbon summary of the town. Um, overall, we tried to figure out the average consumption versus the number of homes, the number of vehicles in Parsippany just in our town. So the municipality emits around 4,200 tons of greenhouse gas emissions per year. They have 14 buildings. They consume about 9.5 million kilowatt hours and 161,000 therms of natural gas. And that is equivalent to around 15 million kilowatt hours of net energy or gross energy consumption. 50% of that is consumed by the sewer plant. We have a separate project to engage with a grant that we receive from Sustainable Jersey to install solar uh, over the landfill or carports and potentially do ground source heat pumps and electric battery backup systems. So that's a project that's in the works and probably will go out to bid soon in an RFP. Um, but essentially targeting that large consumer of the carbon footprint is going to be important. You can see on this table the sewer plan is 4.5 uh, million kilowatt hours of gross energy consumption and 2,300 tons of carbon emissions per year. But overall, you can see the town spends over a million dollars on utilities every year or more and growing. This analysis was, what was done in 2020, and I'm sure they're spending more now based on natural gas. This doesn't even include what they're spending on fleet or vehicles or gasoline. So then community-wide, we basically extrapolated this out based on the, um, the average miles people typically drive per vehicle, the vehicles per home, the net uh, electric consumption and natural gas consumption. And overall, you can see, you know, while 4,200 metric tons of carbon for the municipality is big, our community wide is over 900,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas. So municipality is just a very, very small sliver of this total project. And what we want to do is encourage everybody to take proactive steps to reduce your heating and cooling, your electric and your gasoline consumption. Uh, which are the, the heavy hitters in terms of carbon emissions. But there's 130,000 metric tons of electric consumption and 500,000 metric tons of natural gas uh, through thermal, uh, through the therms of natural gas consumed, and an estimated 130,000 metric tons of gasoline. Um, so how to get to gold? I'm just showcasing a couple of renewable energy features. Overall, transition steps are pretty straightforward, which is first, reduce energy demand with energy efficiencies like LED light bulbs or get your house checked out for air leaks and potentially put in new windows or re-insulate certain things. Once you do that, then you can offset as much electric with um, heat pumps and solar systems 
and uh, other energy efficiency features you can integrate into your building. And this goes for homes or commercials or municipal buildings. It's all sort of the same technology. And then whatever you can't offset, because we realize some people have a lot of shade, uh, they may not be able as productive with solar or they may not be able to generate all of their consumption. As I mentioned, you can go out and you can buy 100% renewable uh, clean energy per kilowatt hour on your electric bill. Uh, typically, it's, it's, it can be less expensive than your current bill. But um, brief plug here on ground source heat pumps and air source heat pumps. So these are basically uh, either tapping into the ground as your thermal exchanger underneath your property uh, or tapping into the air and basically exchanging heat with the air rather than burning um, natural gas for heating. So you can extract heat from the air and put that pump that into your house. Uh, and same thing for a ground source heat pump. You can create a, a thermal loop that goes vertically or horizontally under the ground. Uh, five feet, six feet under the ground is a pretty consistent temperature, 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So throughout the year, you basically have cooling and heating that you can do with a ground source heat pump or an air source heat pump. What that does is it kind of gets you off of natural gas and then you have the opportunity to decarbonize your electric with clean energy. Uh, whether you buy that through a third party or you install a solar system on your house. So there's a couple of different ways of solar photovoltaic or PV systems. They can generate clean energy on site. And the interesting thing about solar is that you're reducing the total demand on the grid by offsetting your own electric footprint on your property. So um, what I've done on my home specifically is I have electric vehicles, a ground source heat pump, and a solar system that covers all the electric of my entire household. So on a net basis, it's basically zero over the course of the year. And I've effectively reduced my demand on natural gas and electric entirely. So these features can be complementary to each other and put together in a way that you basically can be carbon free in a short um, period of time. But solar can be put on the ground, even in domestic locations or homes. You, if you have property, you can put it on the ground. They can be built over parking lots. They can be put on rooftops. And additionally, obviously, they can be put on uh, your home. And then um, a little bit about electric vehicles. So electric vehicles used to be pretty ugly looking. Uh, but now every major OEM is producing some form of electric vehicles. And they have a lot of... Um, new and, and upcoming electric vehicles, whether it's a sport utility vehicle, a truck, a sedan, now they're doing buses, um, garbage trucks, major heavy duty equipment like class eight tractor trailers. And Parsippany, interestingly, uh, an average driving range of an EV is 200 to 250 miles. And we are right in the middle of a key sector across the Northeast. You can get to Boston or all the way down to Washington, D.C. on a single charge in your average electric vehicle. And you know what we're trying to, to showcase here is that Parsippany is at the center point of all these highways in this interstate um, location. And investing the town and getting involved with EV infrastructure is going to be important for all the traffic that flows through, but also the local community so that we can embrace the change and the transformation that has to happen. Uh, this is just a plug on the sewer plant, kind of a, a basic design of where the solar will go. Uh, but also main library, right? Putting carports and solar on the top of this building uh, would completely offset the 453,000 kilowatt hours of electric that we consume. And I, I come from the solar industry, so I did these designs for free. But you can see it doesn't take much to offset everything for the, 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 the main library. We've done studies on all the municipal buildings, and in some way, shape, or form, most of them can be decarbonized with renewable energy. So in closing, I really encourage everybody to get involved uh, in any sustainability aspect, not the green team. You know, it doesn't have to be the green team, but obviously we're recruiting. We have an email. We have a website with resources and videos, and we also have a Facebook page. And in this presentation, Sustainable Jersey, uh, you can go to their website and kind of poke around and see anything that you might be interested in. Um, and then, you know, obviously you can reach out to this email address or me or Judy directly and get involved. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. I thank everybody and uh, really appreciate you being here.